I hope everyone read it before they came here. Um, so I uh, actually, I, I mean, I do actually agree with a lot of the comments that you made, Supervisor um, Teskin and our public, and I want to thank you all for coming out. Um, again, no matter which side you are on, I actually um, see value in, in all of the comments you have made. Um, I have proposed some amendments to the resolution. Uh, instead of saying urge, uh, opposing, I would actually like to urge amendments to SB 827. Um, I do agree that SB 827 does overreach uh, in San Francisco. And I'm actually, you know, surprised, but happy, I don't know how I feel, um, to hear some of the folks come out to say that they uh, really appreciated Home SF, because they certainly didn't when I was working on it. But I hope you can see now that when I was working on it, I was actually trying to go for recapturing the value of these programs where, yes, we might give you two additional stories above existing high limits, but a lot of studies went into why we chose two versus, say, 10 or 9. Um, the fact that we landed on a 30% affordable housing rate, we said no demolition of existing rent controlled units and so forth, that all of those factors and including small business, that was a first in the city. Uh, where in Home SF, it is the only program in the city right now that has to do with any development of affordable housing or even market rate housing that says that you must take all these steps to actually notify, communicate uh, with businesses that there are restrictions around um, lot sizes and mergers and so forth for storefronts on the ground floor. So I don't see any other programs actually doing any of that for small businesses. So yes, I'm very concerned that SB 827 does not take into consideration all those factors that are office, the planning department, mayor's office of housing, small business commission, OEWD, spent over two years negotiating and trying to get through. I'm also, um, I, I mean, I just want to, you know, help you understand also how much we have moved forward because also when we passed Home SF, we had the 100% affordable housing program that we passed prior to that. And at that time, I wanted to eliminate the conditional use requirement for that program and uh, was met with a lot of resistance. And so to this day, we actually don't have a true 100% uh, affordable program for under the density bonus where you don't have a CU. Actually, there is a modified CU for that. And so I would say that what we were trying to work on years ago was actually quite reasonable because we actually wanted to, again, capture the value of all the benefits that we were giving to developers at that time. And so now here we are. I do think that SB 827 is a bit extreme for San Francisco. And so uh, my amendments today, again, I since this bill uh, is in the process of still, it hasn't gone to committee yet and can still be amended, I wanted to um, urge amendments to SB 827. Uh, to ensure that the value of additional height and density is recaptured and that San Francisco's existing affordable housing programs and existing neighborhood character is preserved. Um, and so again, while I do respect Senator Weiner um, and all of his work locally and at the state level, um, this particular bill, though, is troublesome to me. So. Um, some of the other um, clauses that I have here I just wanted to share with the public um, is that um, you know, San Francisco has spent years working with communities on long-range planning efforts, resulting in value capture for affordable housing, transportation, and infrastructure impacts. Um, also, the Board of Supervisors um, is committed to working with other jurisdictions, affordable housing, and tenant advocates to address the state's housing crisis by amending SB 827. Um, and then in the further resolve clauses, I also wanted to urge our state leaders to actually fund affordable housing streams to address the housing crisis, as we all know that funding is a huge challenge. And that the last clause I have here is that the Board of Supervisors will continue to monitor the progress of SB 827 and may provide additional comments, I'm sure we will, as the bill is heard at committee hearings. So that is my proposal to Supervisor Peskin. Um, I think at the heart of it, we do agree that amendments need to be made to SB 827, but of course, um, it'll get down to the wordsmithing here. 